Welcome back to the Aging Project Podcast. I'm your host, Shelley Craft, and together, my friends, we're on a mission to age well, bloody well, if I'm being honest. Let's be real, though. We all need guidance when it comes to aging well, and that's why we've gathered the best possible support team for us. No topic is off limits, and I promise to ask all the right questions, your questions. Before we dive in, don't forget to join our growing community of women from around the world. Sign up at theagingproject.com.au and become part of the Aging Project community. You'll gain access to our treasure trove of podcast episodes, our free five-day morning challenge, and did you know we now have an online store called You Must Try It? It includes products we've discovered from our podcast guests and community. Think low-tox skincare, low-tox makeup, supplements, and more. You'll only find products we've tried, tested, and we love at youmusttryit.com. Are you ready to begin today's episode? All righty, let's do it. Forget about the size of your thighs because that'll come. Because as soon as you feed the brain, you're going to get ahead of that craving and you're not going to want it anyway. And you know what? You might just go for a walk and really enjoy it and release feel-good hormones. So your body de-stresses and you start burning fat. That was Davinia Taylor, today's guest, who's here to chat about weight and becoming the healthiest that she has ever been. Why this topic, you ask? Well, because our research suggests 14 million Australians, that's two in three adults, are statistically overweight or obese, and by 45 to 54 years, 74% of women are overweight or obese. We haven't touched on this topic before because I know there are so many opinions and it is a different journey for everyone. Please welcome Davinia Taylor all the way from the UK. You know, you are our first UK guest, uh, which is very exciting for us here at The Aging Project. And I tell you what, I know that many Aussies will know you from your past work. Um, Of course, we do have the Daily Mail here in Australia. God bless them. Um, And I think, you know, you are really Aussie on the inside, whether you know it or not. You just tell it how it is. You wear your heart on your sleeve. And I know this is going to be a fabulous chat. So we, we really do appreciate your time. Well, I take that as an absolute compliment. I love the Aussie attitude. I love the no BS and I love the sort of like no softly, softly approach. I really hate time wasters and you guys don't waste any time. So yeah, that is my spiritual home. I really need to get my kids down there, to be honest. I mean, I I actually, I'm trying to export my products over there. I've got got a company called Willpower, which I'll explain later, but I'm trying to get into Australia. I'm like, this is so up their street. It's high energy. It's, you know, it's healthy, but being fun. And it's like, why the hell am I? in the UK everyone's so annoyed (laughs) (laughs) well we will absolutely we will absolutely talk about that let's talk about how you got there in the first place obviously um I've been reading your story it's not a diet and I'm struck by the fact that look it is a lot you have lived a very big life in your short you know 45 years or so it's been a long journey for you from obviously being a celebrity, very young, alcoholic, marrying young kids, divorce, rehab, bipolar, the list goes on and on. And look, you know your story better than anyone, obviously. But um, the reason we've got you here is because really on The Aging Project, we've avoided talking weight loss for about, well, as long as we've existed, which is three seasons now. We've had some incredible guests covering all the topics from you know, skin health, gut health, um, cardiovascular health, Ultimately, it comes down to living a good life and carrying a lot of weight has a lot of pressure. It carries a lot of weight on your health and well-being. Um, And I didn't want to speak to a diet expert as such. I wanted to speak to someone who had lived it and and has changed their life because of it. Yeah. So um, when I talk about weight loss, my, my journey didn't start with, oh, I'm overweight. I need to get to a size, whatever. It was, I am absolutely exhausted. I'm knackered, you know? And to be honest, what I learned, the weight loss was a byproduct of what I did. So I started feeding my brain um, good nutrition. So I stopped craving bliss point foods. And I don't know whether your um, listeners are aware of what bliss point foods are, but they're the foods that once you pop, you can't stop. And basically they give you that sort of 
a subliminal craving to have another one that's way beyond your control. And I didn't realize that our brains were actually being hijacked by these food combinations and hyperpalatable foods that are actually we're told to eat lots of like whole grains and, you know, uh, loads and loads of like fruit smoothies and stuff. I mean, I just thought that's what you men to do. And actually what it was doing, it was triggering me into, I mean, I'm an addict by nature. We'll, we'll go into that in a bit. But what it was doing, it was making me snack beyond my control. And of course, with that, I was like, sort of, I was piling on weight anyway, but I was also piling on inflammation. So I had like um, stiff joints, like swollen knees, cankles, you know, all my, all, you couldn't see my collarbone. So it wasn't just body fat. It was like, I was a walking, talking bruise. I was swollen and that was affecting my mental health because I was sluggish and swollen. I had an inflamed brain. So basically I didn't have any control over what I was eating. I didn't have any control over what I was thinking. I didn't have any control over what I was doing, which was basically going down to the kitchen making myself a snack, going back upstairs, dealing with my baby and watching daytime TV and having little energy for anything else. And even that tired me out, you know? So yeah, I was in a catch 22. I was given, being given very poor advice that wasn't actionable. And to be honest, I didn't see any results at all. Mm. And to me, uh, the only advice really was, well, you're obviously depressed. So take some antidepressants. And I'm like, well, I don't think I'm depressed. I'm just really flat. I'm just meh. I'm depressed I'm because I feel like shit. Yeah, That's why I'm, I'm depressed. Just got, yeah. so I'm, I'm, not, I'm not like crying. I'm not, well, I'm not laughing, you know. So what's mm. going I was literally numb, a numb, swollen bruise. There you go. That's what I was doing. That was, that's how I felt. And look, it's a super common story, isn't it? Whether it's um, post-children, whether it's just a change in your situation, we've all felt like we just can't be bothered anymore. And that takes many different directions, doesn't it? And, and sort of manifests in many different ways. And for you, it was sort of that just eating. It was just... It was, yeah, it was eating. And it was like, I mean, I had no motivation to do anything else, really. That was the only thing that sort of sparked any sort of oh, enjoyment or oh, what can I have now what, or what. And it was all that, always that anticipation of something because when I ate it, say, a bag of crisps followed by or always with a sugar chaser. If I have like salt, I need a sugar chaser, as we know. So whenever I had that, once I'd consumed it, I didn't feel any uplift. I didn't feel any surging energy, but I was craving the sugar. So it was like it wasn't working. The sugar had stopped working, doing its job, which is meant to give you energy. I'd literally become yeah. resistant to sugar. I'd become like insulin resistant, I guess. So, yeah, and it was, I mean, all my doctor said to me is eat less, do more. I mean, shut mm -hmm. up. What beige <laughs> advice, eat less and do more. It, it, you, it's ridiculous. It's so, it's so, and you know, the everything in moderation it's such beige advice. Uh, we need real proper advice that works for women within five minutes. That's what mm -hmm. I'm talking about. I want to feel different within five minutes. I've not got time, nor the patience, nor the mental capacity to wait for six months. It doesn't happen That's for it. me. No. That's it. And as you say, you know, you can't just do something in moderation. You can't just have a little bit of this and a little bit of that. It, it doesn't work that way. The willpower that that takes is virtually non-existent. And speaking to you now, I can't imagine there was a time when you were ever short of energy. You are a bundle of energy. Yeah. And, I, you know, I've got four kids. I've got two exes. That takes up a lot of mental strength. Trust me, just trying to be civil to people. It takes up a lot of patience, as we all know. So, yeah, it, it is hard. It is a stressful life. I am spinning lots of plates, but I, I now wouldn't have it any other way. Roll back 10 years ago, I'd have been overwhelmed by this. And that could have tipped me into a traumatic, depressive episode because I would have had too much on my plate and I would have just like imploded. So, yeah, so I, I had to get myself better before my life got better. And that started with feeding my brain serious nutrition that it wants to thrive on, not that it wants to die on. I mean, the body wants to survive. It wants to run around. It wants to it wants to be vital. It wants to be happy. We were not designed to be miserable and sluggish at all. So I think what we need to do as a human race, doesn't matter where you are on the planet, we need to get on the same page that the advice that's put through our GPs is a non-starter. Rid ridiculous diet advice that we know doesn't work. I mean, the whole 
whole grain rhetoric. It's it's just it's a, it's a lie. If anything, it causes you leaky gut, which is going to cause you brain fog, which is going to make you reach for something from Cadbury's. I mean, it's just a catch twenty two what they give you. So yeah, so I'm I'm like on a water sort of like. Forget about the size of your thighs because that will come. Because as soon as you feed the brain, you're going to get ahead of that craving and you're not going to want it anyway. And you know what? You might just go for a walk and really enjoy it and release feel-good hormones. So your body de-stresses and you start burning fat. You know, if your body's stressed, it's going to store fat. And that's the problem. I mean, I'm like, it's so, if me, if I can figure it out, why on earth can't someone who spent 10 years at medical school figure it out? I'm just a (laughs) mom. What's everyone's problem? I imagine this is a very different Davina than we saw 10 years ago and we've seen those before and after shots and we're we're putting them up um, for our audience to take a look at. I mean, again, a very, very common story, but the language that you're talking now is not the knowledge that that Davinia had. So what happened to me, I got into sort of like coffee with MCT oil, the famous Bulletproof Coffee by Dave Asprey, which was just taking kicking off in America. And so when I discovered this, I tried it and I tried too much and it went a bit wrong. Like it's called disaster pants because obviously my body wasn't used to using fat as a fuel source. It was used to using carbohydrates, sugar, cereal, you Mm -hmm. know, the the usual junk we have. And, but I noticed something happened to my brain. It was like a fizz in my brain. And I was like, what the hell is that? Well, that's when I started to read more about the fat being turned into, uh, hitting the liver, being turned into an energy source called ketones, and that shoots up to your brain. Now that gets ahead of your brain seeking glucose. So you stop the carbohydrate cravings. And for me to just have a pause button on that instinctive Mm -hmm. get up, have two bowls of cereal, for me to just have pause on that, to be able to say, maybe I shouldn't because I'm going to kick off a roller coaster day of mood swings. That was a miracle. To just be able to add a medium chain triglyceride, which is just from a coconut, into my morning routine. And you can have it just off the spoon if you don't want coffee. But I do recommend coffee just to boost your dopamine. Um, it's It was incredible because otherwise I white knuckle. I white knuckle mm-hmm. against croissants. I white knuckle against bread. I white knuckle against granola. I mean, I white knuckle against everything except when I put this in place, then the battle's over because I'm not even thinking about it. I'm getting on with my day. And if I do want breakfast, it will be bacon and eggs. It will not be bready stuff because it literally hijacks your day. Many of our guests have shared their love of using an infrared sauna. But for those without the space or the budget, we've discovered Heat Healers, a Bondi-based company offering infrared sauna blankets, which are so easy to use at home. You can now enjoy the benefits of an infrared sauna at the fraction of the cost. The Heat Healers infrared sauna blanket is easy to use, easy to clean, and easy to store away in its own portable travel bag. Just go to heathealers.com and use the code TAP25 at the checkout, that is T-A-P-2-5, to get a huge 25% off your order. Yep, that's right, a 25% discount. So after today's episode, go and check them out at heathealers.com and use the code TAP25 at the checkout to experience all the health benefits of using an infrared sauna in your home. Right, now back to my chat. So, Davinia, it was for you that one morning that you went, bugger it, I'm not living like this anymore, what am mm. I going to do? And you found Bulletproof Coffee, which yeah. you can make yourself at home. As you said, it's a, yeah. a shot of espresso, a tablespoon of MCT oil, and you can chuck some That's ghee some, or, or whatever else in there. Whiz it up, yeah, yeah. As well, whiz it up. And then that was enough for you to go, I'm satiated, I'm satisfied. I've got through, I've got through this first meal period now what am I going to do? So was it an every morning thing for you? Like, oh, I've made it through that first set of cravings. I'm good for another, you know, few hours. I can do this. I can do this. Or were you, are you one of those people you said you had an addictive personality? So once you're on the road to this is going to be a great day, uh, is your mind pretty much set on that? Or is that that constant battle every time that it's meal time? Well, me being me and sort of like an N of one experiment, I'm my own lab rat. I can't help it but try something else because my mentality is if I feel good now, I'm sure I could feel better. That's the addict in me. You know, oh, you know, I wonder what two pills will do. You know, it's ridiculous. (laughs) But um, so there was a documentary on about cold water exposure. And I just thought, oh, what's this now? What are these wellness 
<laughs> what's well, the, next? Yeah, exactly. What are these morons <laughs> going to try and tell me? Anyway, they start. That's when I was introduced to dopamine, the drive, determination, sort of desire hormone that I was mm-hmm. clearly lacking in because I desired nothing except to just sit on the sofa. I had mm-hmm. zero self esteem, and so it was a catch twenty two. So I'd self sabotage with my food and drinks, you know, the endless smoothies, the protein shakes, all tons of fruit and everything and apple juicing. I mean, just sugar spiking stuff. Um, Anyway, this guy went out into some lake in the north of England or wherever, somewhere completely hostile and awful. And he was uh, getting some girl off antidepressants by boosting her dopamine with cold exposure. And I just thought, okay, let's look into this. I'm interested in dopamine. I think I've always liked dopamine, which I have done. But um, and then I thought, OK, where can I a, find this naturally? Where, where, where can, can I, I find this? this? Yeah, not in a nightclub. Do you know what I mean? Not that sort of dopamine. So, yeah, I mean, literally, I, d- I started doing some digging and basically cold water exposure increases your baseline dopamine by 200 percent. That's similar to uh, probably a, a couple of glasses of wine. You know, when you suddenly feel a little bit of a swagger about you on your first two glasses of wine before it tips over the edge, of course, and you end up drunk. You can't tell but, me getting in a freezing cold bath gives yeah. you <laughs> gives you swagger. That's it, a very right, tough it, pill it, to swallow, it, that one, it isn't act, it? But it actually does because once you do that, you have a cascade of, uh, of hormones that d- descend throughout the body. And unlike having a glass of wine or like a, a chocolate bar, the dopamine remains stable throughout the day. You don't have a drop-off effect. Science hasn't figured out why yet. It's exactly the same with a runner's high. Science can't figure it out, but it is there. It's been tracked. It's been monitored. And there is an uplift of 200% dopamine. With an increase in dopamine, all of a sudden, you get your self-esteem. You get a bit of energy because the dopamine's boosting all these other hormones. And that's what I mean by hacking your brain chemistry to get ahead of any low mood. you that's where everything begins. You, all movement begins in the brain, whether you're going to move to put on a pair of trainers to go for a walk, or you're going to move, or should I say shuffle, to the kitchen for another scavenge around the fridge and that carb cupboard that we all have, no matter where on the planet you are. Yeah, so it's it's really important to understand your brain is signaling you to do certain things, be it good or bad. And when I understood that, cold, MCT, I could boost my dopamine. All of a sudden, I became who I am now. And which is somebody who can, I mean, I still get overwhelmed. I've got four kids and the whole, these, I've got a pair of dogs that run off all the time. I mean, shit happens, but I'm far more resilient. And I actually, it doesn't, it doesn't upset me as much to the point where I turn to a glass of wine or I, which in my case would be a vat of wine, or I'd open up like 25 bags of crisps. You know, I do have a stop button now, which is incredible. So I've totally rewired my brain, I guess, by doing this. And I think everyone can. It's just knowing and just having a couple of minutes in the morning to just whack some MCT in your coffee, have a finish your shower on cold. And by the way, you don't have to do it every day. You need to flip a coin. That's what you need to do because you need to you need to keep your body guessing. So mm-hmm. you, the cold. So just say to yourself, I'm going to flip a coin. If it lands on heads, I've got to do 15 seconds of cold water. That's it. And if it lands on tails, I don't have to. The body won't, won't adapt then, and it will always boost the dopamine. It just keeps my body guessing and adaptive, and, you know, it, it, it just heightens my day. I don't want beige. I don't want boring. I want opportunities to come at me, and I go, bloody right, yeah, let's do it, you know? Otherwise, what have you got? It's obvious you're an incredibly passionate person and I guess that passion for knowledge was in there too. It wasn't just sitting on the couch watching a doco and, you know, letting that information slip over. You grabbed that one word, dopamine, went, right, what am I going to do with that? And then there was the keto coffee or or the bulletproof coffee. And then I can tell you were just absorbing all that information, which again, some people will just go, I don't want to know. I don't want to learn. I'm still in the rut. Like if you have that cold shower in the morning, you're saying that's going to set you up for a great day. You, it can't help but set you up for the great day because your brain wants it. Definitely going to be better than not doing is what I'm saying. And let's face it, I mean, you are your own sort of barometer. You know if you're going to have a good day or you've got a bad day. So if I've got a heavy day in front of me, I'll more than likely have a 15-second cold shower at the end. It's not nice. I hate it. I hate it. But my brain loves it. So, you know, that's what you got to do. And this is like we live in that we're in an evolutionary mismatch. We are primal creatures used to all these stresses. But we but, you know, we 
we are literally living in a modern day world and it, we need to be primed for stress, constant stress all the time. So a little bit of cold exposure will send your body back into a really sort of like resilient mode and it'll help you be the best person you need to be for that day. And mm -hmm. I just think everyone needs a bit of confidence and a bit of self-esteem. And if it's something that's free and it's got scientific data to back it, I mean, who are you kidding yourself? That you, You're just kidding yourself if you think that you can just sludge your way through a day, just go into cafe shops, get in your brownies and all that. It's not going to work. We've all tried it. And the result is nil. It's not a treat. No. You're just you're in your own prisoner. And, you know, That's it. nothing changes if nothing changes. So, you know, just change one morning a week and see what happens. How many? How long did it take for that Davinia to transform into the powerhouse that's sitting in front of us now? Like we look at that photo, it's 10 years. And if you set your mind to it, did that weight start coming off quickly? You say, you want results, I need to see results or I'm never going to stick to this. Yeah, I mean, literally before my eyes, um, as soon as I um, basically turned what the doctor said to me on my on its head, I started cutting out um, loads of, I mean, it wasn't complete. My, my diet is not ketogenic, by the way. Um, I do like carbs. They are really good at nighttime. I, and, and no doctor will tell you to have carbs at night. They'll say, oh, that's really bad. No, no, no. Carbs are what you need when you finish work, when you want to wind down. The reason why we reach for carbohydrates is because they dampen down cortisol. So they're a comfort food. So when you don't want to think anymore, you need to have your carbohydrates because what it does is it increases serotonin, your cozy hormone, which then trips very quickly into melatonin, your sleep hormone. So if you're going to have a sandwich at 12 o'clock, you're probably going to be sleepy by one because that serotonin has turned into melatonin. So you're going to have a crappy afternoon because you're fighting against your sleep hormones, which means well, by the time you do get to bed, you'll probably end up of mismatch your cortisol spike. So you'll end up lying in bed tired and wired. I mean, who wants that? It's awful. It's just like, a vicious oh cycle, isn't it? So, yeah, so We've just messed it up so badly for so, so long. Bad. And do you know what? It's companies like Kellogg's who say eat little and often and breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Yeah, from your private jet, Mr. Kellogg, CEO. I mean, of course, they want us to snack and pick and eat and be addicted because it increases their, their profit margin. My argument is don't do that. Start the day with some fat. Go as long as you can just fasting so you can... Fasting is really good for uh, cleaning out, say, cancerous cells, this sort of thing. Just giving your body a rest from digesting will really help you do sort of like an internal clean out. It's called autophagy. Rubbish word, ignore it. But what it, what it is, it's like you're, you're cleaning out your system. So while you're digesting, your brain can't think as sharp. So I fuel with fat during the day so I can have no insulin spikes whatsoever. It just keeps me a cool, calm, what well, calm? Yeah, not calm. It no, keeps me. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have used calm. Yeah, but... Cannot, but not calm. <laughs> but, you know, it keeps me focused. It keeps me You teachable. are a weapon. You are a machine. You are focused. <laughs> yes. Uh, but do you know what I mean? I, the last thing I want is brain fog in the middle of the day. I save that. I save that brain fog, those carb comas for later on in the day. So it's about when you eat as well as what you eat. And just be aware that there's some foods that are created addictive. So I've got a huge, big sort of bugbear about sunflower oil and rapeseed oil and veg oil in general, because that, if you just have a look, where well, you go to the supermarket or just go into your kitchen and just have a look at your granola bars, have a look it's at, in at everything, everything, isn't it? It's Absolutely like, in everything. And it's touted as heart healthy. There is no evidence to say it's heart healthy at all whatsoever. That is just a lie. But what it does, because it was developed as um, farmyard clean, it used to clean farmyard machinery. So we've got something in the UK called the pink stuff. And it's like this paste. And it was invented in the 30s. And the first ingredient in it is veg oil. Now, this cleans outdoor for garden furniture. It's really ferocious stuff. I mean, I've got four boys who go outside in white socks to play football. I'm like, what are you doing? Why, do you, why can't you put your football boots on anyway? <laughs> I get the pink stuff out, get the veg oil out. Meanwhile, it's in every single packaged food. I tell you why it is. Because what it does, it strips the gut of mucus because it's a detergent. So as soon as your gut starts in your mouth, as soon as you put it in your mouth, straight away, it's stripping the mucus in your gut, which stops hormones that are in your gut mucus from signaling to your brain that you've eaten enough. So what it does is that stuff, turns off the mechanism to say, I'm satisfied, I am full. 
That's why with, say, a takeaway or something like that, you always go back for more because the brain hasn't registered how much nutrition you've had because the veg oil has stripped the mucus in your gut, which would allow you to say, yeah, hold on, we've overeaten here. We don't need any more. So that's why it's in there. That, and it also keeps things like sort of gooey and stuff. But I mean, there's other oils that could do that, like coconut oil or olive oil or whatever. I mean, But this is cheap stuff, cheap, cheap, highly, highly processed stuff that is literally brainwashing you to eat more. I mean, if I had a, a snack company, I'd use it because you're going to sell billions, you know, and it's so cheap and accessible. So it's a great business model. But that but just be aware if you're picking it up. Why can't you stop with one crisp? It's because of the veg oil in it. That's why. Mm -hmm. I think the biggest lesson I'm picking up here, Davinia, is that it's up to you. You have to take responsibility. And there's, you know, as you say, numerous books. We can learn as much as we want. We can speak to dietitians. We can talk to our GPs. We can, you know, gather that research. But it has to come down to you wanting to make this change for yourself. And and to sit here with you now, seeing the incredibly um, dramatically transformed woman that we're seeing, you did that. Yeah, um, I did that. But we're just just by chance, though, you know, no one would have told me this. I mean, we're talking a good 10 years now. I've, I've, I've managed to keep the weight off and keep the brain OK. And that could have been I don't know where I would have been actually right now at 45 if I hadn't found this information out just by, mm. by doing my own sort of work and just having and, and just seeing such quick results sort of motivated me to do more. You know what I mean? So I'm always like, oh, what's next? What's next? Mm -hmm. But I love the way you've gone about it. You sort of you sort of went about getting your mind right because you're not going to be able to stick to anything if you don't do that. And, of course, if you're feeling better in the morning, well, then perhaps going for a walk isn't such a bad thing and you have now got your sneakers on or your leisure wear and you're off out the door. So it's that, it's that steamroll effect, isn't it? It's like, okay, now I'm on the move and all I've got to do is repeat, repeat, repeat. Because some people, myself included, are that ill that going for a walk is not available to them. It's just not on the radar. The body just won't do it. So what else can you do from the comfort of your own home? And that's turn the shower on cold. And even if you can't do that, you've got so many receptors in your face, you could submerge your face in a bowl of ice water. That'll probably do just as well. In fact, I've heard it's actually better because you've got more receptors on your face. So the body goes, <gasps> goes into shock, sort of like turns on the, and then when it realizes it's not actually going to die or the parasympathetic nervous system kicks off and that's when you get the feel good hormones. So it's the relief from that. So imagine all you go. have to do is just, fill the sink up, chuck go. some ice out and try it. Just try it for, I don't know, on and off for a week, one day on, one day off. Just see what happens to your brain chemistry. Otherwise, you're going to be, we're going to be years waiting for someone to come mm -hmm. up with the cure. And by which time, you know, you'll have had all of this information just right at your fingertips, literally at your kitchen tap. A quick pause in today's episode to share some of my must-try products at youmusttryit.com. Through the Aging Project, I've learned managing stress is something to be intentional about, which is why over at youmusttryit.com, we've created a stress and sleep page with all of our favorite products. After today's episode, go check out the Shakti mat. This is an acupressure mat with over 6,000 spikes. Yes, I swear by it, as do so many of our customers. Even previous guest, Dr. Peter Wright from the Vera Wellness Clinic said, I love this mat, Shelley. Thank you. It is my pleasure, Dr. Peter. <laughs> to grab yours, just go to youmusttryit.com and type Shakti. That's S-H-A-K-T-I. You'll also find essential oils, supplements and organic teas, all designed to reduce stress and aid sleep. Trust me, all are a must try. Just go to youmusttryit.com for a 10% discount off your first order and to join our community. The good news is we also ship internationally. Yes, we do. All righty, back to the show. One thing that we haven't spoken about is rest, and it's often weird to talk about rest when you're talking exercise and weight loss, but that is such an enormous piece in the wellness puzzle. Yes. So I, like I alluded to earlier, I have my carbohydrates at night to take advantage of that serotonin, melatonin sort of journey. So when I come home from work, the kids get picked up, I'll probably have a snack or something, usually like 
I love bacon and eggs. I love bacon and eggs. But then I'll have my proper meal with them. So we'll probably have like roast beef, uh, loads of potatoes. I'm a huge fan of sourdough bread. I mean, I'm English. I mop everything. I love gravy mopping up. I mean, I'm, I'm, it's an, I'm an animal. And basically. that's done you no harm. That's that's done you good as opposed to harm because, they, again, there's those things that you just can't give up, right? There is the pastas and the breads. You might be able to give up the croissants and the donuts, but tell me I can still have sourdough divinia. <laughs> yeah, of course, because that's what I, I have it at night because I'm prepared and I'm gearing myself up for slobbing out in front of Netflix. And that's what I want to do. I want to have a carb coma. I want to be brain dead. I want to watch some ridiculous reality TV. We're just coming to the end of Maths Australia here. So it's the final episode. So I'm I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm really into the. (laughs) (laughs) So I am literally brain dead by then that I'm watching jobs like this. So you know what I mean? I have no more brain cells left to compute anything. So I'm going to sit there and judge people. For the last two hours of my day in a carb coma, and boom, I'm asleep. Game, no trauma, no horror movies, nothing like that. No, no deep science, nothing. I just watch something brain brain numbing, and I switch off. I mean, that's not for everyone. You just do what you what. It's all right. It's on my network. It's fine. You can talk about maths as much as you want. (laughs) I'll be delighted. I mean, it's my first season. It's my first season. It's my first season. It's the girls in the office. They said, "Oh my god, you're not watching it." So I was bullied into it, and now, of course, me being me, I'm addicted. (laughs) So anyway. But that's my guilty pleasure. But yeah, so you have your carbs at night. You know that that's doing you good. That's giving you a cozy feeling. That's going to give you a better restful sleep. And also another thing that I do, I've got one of these uh, little infrared sauna pods. They, mm-hmm. um, they're they about $200 and you zip them up. And I, I actually put that next to my bed because I've not got space for an actual sauna. But the infrared is brilliant for detoxing, particularly things in your liver. Like I I often suffer from PMT because I have a case of estrogen dominance a lot. So by using infrared, the light penetrates your skin, goes into your organs and heats them from the inside out. So you sweat out from the organs out, almost like a healthy microwave for want of a better (laughs) analogy. But that has really helped my mood, my mental health. So I have that before I go to bed. I'll have a little bit of a cool shower, not cold, but cool. And then I will jump on. I've got a little spike mat, five, 10 minutes on that. And again, the parasympathetic nervous system releases all those feel good safety hormones. So you trip yourself into a really, really deep sleep filled with REM. You flush out all your brain and you become regenerated for a great morning. So you bounce out of bed. And then the day starts again, you know. So for me, my morning starts with what I'm doing at night, what I've eaten the night before, what 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 um, detox. What's giving you that great night's sleep, sauna. isn't it? Yes, yes. That and that cozy feeling that you know you mm-hmm. don't want to run out to a bar or anything. No, you want to stay in and feel cold, cozy, and like in that nest womb. And then th- then you start restoring yourself. Because if you don't sleep well, we all know what happens. It's an actual form of torture. We've all had newborns. It's hell on earth. And, yeah. you know, I, I I could never do those days again at all. So, But that's it. If you don't wake up well, you can't set yourself up well, can you? And then the rest of the day is downhill from there and you almost have to surrender that day to the day and go, right, I'm going to try again tonight. I'm going to set myself up for a good night's sleep and then tomorrow I can begin again. Yeah. I just wanted to say about sleep as well, because a lot of women write to me saying, but I need a couple of glasses of wine before I go to sleep to get me to sleep. And I I need to say that no matter what, um, science has now changed the rhetoric as usual. No amount of alcohol is good for you, regardless of like red wine having polyphenols. And you'd literally have to drink a vineyard to get the benefits from the polyphenols. What it does, a bit like hand sanitizer and a bit like the veg oil, it strips the gut of its microbes it is a sanitizer so it will stop you having the serotonin the feel-good cozy hormones so you often get a very broken night's sleep you probably don't get any deep sleep at all even though you're asleep you're not getting restorative sleep you know you've got different types of sleep throughout Mm -hmm. you cycle Mm -hmm. different um types of sleep throughout the evening so you really have to knock that on the head and know that it's not aiding your sleep, it's hindering. So that's why you can you never feel refreshed after a, a glass of wine. So if you're really struggling coming off alcohol, I'd recommend uh, having L-theanine. Again, just have a, a really big dose of it, maybe 400 milligrams of it before you go to bed, which will 
close down that chatter in your brain because Mm -hmm. it releases GABA, another safety hormone, an anti-anxiety hormone. So that's L-theanine. It's found in green tea. You'll find it in any supplement. Sometimes team it with lemon balm, but try and get out that habit of leaning on the alcohol. The first couple of days will be tricky because it, we're creatures of habit. But trust me, after a couple of, about two days of restorative sleep, the, the will to go back will have d- diminished considerably. And you'll be on a fi- you'll have a fighting chance to have a good day then. That is a wonderful tip. Thank you. Thank you for that one. I was saying, do you supplement with anything else? Obviously, we're eating lots of proteins. We're getting our carbs. Um, We've got our bulletproof Mm -hmm. coffee in the morning. So for those who love their coffee, there's still that. We're not depriving you of that at all. Do you boost your eating plan or do you boost your daily food intake? We don't want to use the word diet ever, ever. Um, Well, actually, a a good little supplement that you might want to have a look at is um, because I've Everyone's talking about Ozempic and, you know, uh, all this weight weight loss stuff. Um, I found, because we don't know the real side effects, and what I'm getting feedback from people who are on Ozempic is they get chronic fatigue, which for me is like, well, what's right. the point of that? You, 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 you're losing weight, but you're shattered, probably because it's yeah. interfering with the energy systems. So if you are going to have your Chinese takeaway followed by a pizza or an ice cream chaser, as we sometimes do, I'd really take a look at berberine. Berberine is a it's from a root, but studies have come out to show that like uh, it's actually as good as, if not better, than metformin, which of course has tons of side effects as well, like chronic mm-hmm. fatigue. So berberine's a really good one to have a look look out for. So if you do, I mean, there's so many pressures for us to like fall off the wagon and just like when you go out to restaurants and stuff like that. I always take berberine with me anyway because I know what's going to happen. I'm going to eat something and then I'm going to scan the dessert menu and do you know what I just don't feel like the after effects of messing up my insulin so berberine is a really really good one for you to take a look at really good Write that down. and Thank also you. I some yeah and and I've had um my DNA tested and I've seen uh within my detox mechanisms that I'm not very efficient at turning NAC into glutathione Glutathione is our master antioxidant. So, for example, if the kids go back to school, they all come back with like snotty stuff. I'll get the cold, but Matthew won't because he's efficient at creating his own glutathione. If I don't supplement with glutathione, like a liposomal one, um, mm-hmm. I generally get I'm more likely to get ill. So glutathione is another one that I really I really think is quite worthwhile having, particularly if you're a, a busy mom. So spinning plates and you're literally at the forefront of all these germs coming back every September, every, you know, it, it's, it's no, oh, going happens, on a plane. I mean, you know, we just get, and I just don't have time to be ill. So I think glutathione is another really handy one to just know about and to put it in. Mm-hmm. If you feel like you're getting more and more run down, get that into your system as well. But so my top takeaway for me personally, because we're not all the same is L-theanine for, to help with caffeine. So you don't get the, you don't get the jitters, you get a cool, calm energy L-theanine again, if you're coming off alcohol, so do a much bigger stack, so maybe 400 milligrams at night to stop the chatter in your head. That will really dampen down cortisol. Glutathione, just because if you're a busy mom or you're just in a, in a classroom, it's always handy to have that master antioxidant. And berberine, in case you just can't help but just go out for a ridiculous all-you-can-eat bargain basement pizza fest. Which again is going to happen, isn't it? It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Now you've got yeah, things it, it, in place that fair, can get you back on the wagon. Exactly. You're not just, I mean, because the foods are so addictive. Yeah, they'll just keep you on a low down. So you end up seeking more. So if you start off on like a Sunday night with a Chinese takeaway, by Thursday, I've already had a pizza, fish and chips, and probably an Indian because I'm just like trying to boost my dopamine. But if you get it out of your system fast enough, I mean, that'll really help. So the berberine will stop that insulin roller coaster. It's a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant supplement. And just go and stick your head in a freezing cold bowl of ice and get your dopamine yes. hit that way and, then, and, and start then, over again. And that. You are one extraordinary human. And I think we're all sitting here listening and going, God, if I could have half her energy, imagine the stuff I would get done in a day. <laughs> I could come up with my own products. This is amazing. This is it because I'm the world's biggest procrastinator. I can spend hours if I'm not fueled right, I'll spend hours umming and ahhing about the most ridiculous stuff. I procrastinate, and we all do. But it's about getting ahead of getting ahead of that 
brain slump, really, and just giving your brain what it needs to function and do the work for you, really. And they sh- life shouldn't be an effort. I mean, it is, but it shouldn't It shouldn't be that food's causing you to feel like, like in, in a funk. You, you don't want that. That's not fair. That is not fair on us. You are a champion. I think what we need is a grab from Davinia Taylor that we can play over and over again. We can have this on a loop so when we get up in the morning, whether it's our alarm or not, what, what would you say to all those women out there that know they're going to wake up tomorrow morning and go, oh, I just can't do it. If we could press play on you, what would it be? Okay, it would be no one is going to look after you like you can so put your head in some cold water and crack on with your day that's all I'm saying it doesn't matter what life throws at you you've done one commendable thing you've put yourself in a place of discomfort you've survived it you've reaped the benefits of some feel-good hormones and eventually the effect will just take hold and you will as soon as you feel good you will grab onto that feeling with both hands So just one little thing today could change the trajectory of your life. So, yeah, just think about the trajectory. Feed the brain, the right chemicals, and the body will follow, without doubt. Davinia Taylor, you are a bloody legend. Thank you. And so are you. How lovely to speak to you. What a lovely, lovely, lovely chat. Oh, I've, I've really enjoyed myself, and I can't wait to come and see you. We know so many of you struggle with your weight, which is why we asked Davinia onto the show. We hope you'll remember the title of her book is It's Not a Diet because our belief is diets don't work. Let's focus on becoming the healthiest versions of ourselves, not on fad dieting. She offered many suggestions from MCT oil to glutathione. Uh, She mentioned berberine, acupressure, shakti mats, cold and heat therapy, reducing or removing alcohol, and of course, getting our bodies moving. But the trick is making that decision to begin. In her book, she wrote, I knew the way I was living was unhealthy, but I kept putting off getting healthy until the next day. It's so easy to make those promises that everything will be different tomorrow. That quote really resonated with me. So ladies, let's begin today, not tomorrow, because we're worth it. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it with your loved ones and do check out youmusttryit.com for the products mentioned. Thank you so much for being here. I hope today's chat with Davinia made a difference for you. I'm Shelley Craft and we're here to get well, my friends, together. Talk soon. As always, the Aging Project podcast is for educational and entertainment purposes. Always seek medical advice from a qualified practitioner.